Hey YouTube, it's Sticky again. Uh, back for an update. Um, for I know for my everyday carry, I said something about a, a new holster and a flashlight. Uh, for the flashlight, I said it was gonna be the Bushnell TR KR two two five. Here's the flashlight. You got your white LED, sorry, red, and your blood, which is like a bluish purple light. Um, Really awesome. You don't have to click it all the way down to you can you know cycle through silently and then press down all the way to what you want. Uh, lightweight. They did have a smaller one. I think it was 125 looms. This is 225. And then they had a one that was a Bushnell Pro. I believe that was 325. Um, but it didn't have the blood light or the red light. It was just white. At least that I saw on the packaging. I didn't see anything else. Uh, also, for my holster, I got this Bianchi, Bianchi um, leather holster, simple, you know, it's got the little snap on the inside, great holster, and if I, the original one I have, which is in the box, uh, um, was a size 15, this is a Burst of Thunder Pro 9mm, and it was too large for it. Um, so Gander Mountain actually carries that pistol now and it carries it in the ultimate carry if you're interested I think it's like 500 and some odd dollars um, But I ended up having to get I went to a really smaller size and the, the this is the new one same. It's the same style um, size 7 so if you're inter interested uh, in that pistol look for a holster um, That'd be the one uh, and other thing, oh, I actually did some upgrading and updating on the 3030. Uh, I got a new tube spring and follower, new scope, and recoil pad. Uh, the, re the original one is just that plastic, useless, it definitely hurts if you're a skinny person like me. Um, with you know with the recoil, the recoil isn't bad, it doesn't bother me, it's just, I like, I like to have something that's a little softer recoil pad. So I got this limb saver uh, pre-built. It's not an exact fit. Um, I have noticed that. It's, but I really don't care as long as it actually works. Scope is a Nikon Buckmaster II. Uh, it comes in either 3 by 9 by 40, which is this one, or it comes in 4 by 12 by 40. Uh, both uh, styles um, come with the zero reset turret, which means you zero your rifle in. You, know, you dial in, zero it in, and then you lift the turret up and turn it back to the zero mark. So if you're looking at your cheat sheet, you could just look at it and be like, okay, I need to go five clicks up from zero. So all you do is just move five clicks up. That's all you do because it's already at zero. Um, now for the follower and spring, the reason why I got the new follower is because with the Hornady lever revolution, if your Marlin or Winchester or Henry was built before they came out with that it's not gonna have the right follower in it you know follower that's actually gonna accept that monofilla uh, flex tip so I got the got the new part from Brownells and a new magazine tube spring uh, the tube spring the new one is actually two inches longer than the one that came in this rifle uh, I'm not sure if this one was cut or anything. This was a used rifle when I bought it. Um, came all the way down from Georgia. Yeah, I want to say Georgia. But uh, scope is awesome. It's got the the BDC reticle in there, bullet drop uh, compensation reticle. Uh, I did already had set up the Nikon spot on uh, information. On the computer, printed the stuff out. So I want to zero it at 50 yards. Uh, the reason why I'm zeroing at 50 yards uh, with this ammo is because where I hunt, uh, like I said before, I think uh, is public hunting, um, and the area that I'm at, it's it's pretty dense. Um, there definitely is some areas where you can shoot a quite a good distance beyond 50 yards, even 100 yards. Um, so, I mean, it, the, the rifle is going to be perfect for those ranges. I don't expect to shoot deer with beyond 300 yards. Um, I don't expect to shoot a deer, even though this could go out to 300 yards and probably, you know, 
hit a deer and maybe drop after it runs for a few, you know, 50 yards or so. But I'm not going to take that chance. Um, I just wanted an accurate round for this rifle. Hornady makes it. Um, so some people actually have some people's 30, you know, Marlins, even the same amount. And it doesn't really like the ammo. It actually likes, you know, maybe their American Whitetail or maybe it just, they just stick with Remington, you know, what they actually know. Um, I didn't go with the iron sights because, uh, one, I can't really see that good with the original iron sights. And the fact that they have the original back here. Actually, it's a foldable one, and it's barely sitting below the scope. But well, there's plenty of room, so if there's any recoil, it's actually not going to hit each other. Um, I think the distance between the rear and the front is way too close to each other. Uh, Skinner Peep Sights actually makes a peep sight that mounts to either the two back here or a mount to one and use the other hole as a plug and then it screws into one of the front ones. Um, I would have gone with the, I would have definitely go with that peep sight if you're looking for a peep sight. Uh, Skinner's, Google Skinner Sights. Great pricing too, uh, a lot of different uh, models uh, to choose from. Uh, I, I would go with it, but with my eye, I like to see exactly what I'm actually shooting at. Uh, if it's actually, you know, a good enough buck, a mature buck. There's a lot of people uh, today that I know that, I, I, and I know this is, you know, it's personal opinion and belief. Um, I like to shoot something that's, you know, an eight point and above. Um, but even if it's, you know, an old six point, I really don't care. It's just I go after the mature deer. Because um, you may never know what the younger one's going to be. You seriously don't. You'd be like, oh, it's a great, you know, six pointer. Its rack is great. And it could actually, you know, go from six to, you know, a, a 14 point next year. You, you could have just had yourself a trophy buck. Um, anyways, but yeah, that's the only things I have done to this rifle. Uh, I really don't plan on doing anything else besides I'll probably, um, the band here, the band screw, uh, it's kind of torn up a little bit from the previous owner. I'm, I'm still debating on whether or not, uh, I'm going to see if I can't find one around here, but, uh. I want to get the, the stud here and the stud installed in the back um, just so I can have a sling because, I mean, it's – the way it's set up, you can't, like, you know, wrap your hand around, you know, comfortably so it kind of sits your hand, but I really don't mind it. I mean, it's – you may never know if you're going to be walking around in public hand all of a sudden. One jumps in front of you, and all you know, you got to sling it and sling it. By the time that it's completely gone, so uh, see what happens. Um, scope is really crystal clear. Uh, it, if you're worried about, you know, oh, it's a Nikon, they're not that good scopes. They're actually pretty good scopes. Uh, you know, it, I don't, I don't understand why people have problems with them. Uh, I think they're doing a lot better job. For now on, um, oh, the eye, the back eyepiece. This rigid ring is that. It's actually a separate ring. You actually have to turn it clockwise, and then no, actually, yeah, turn it clockwise to loosen it, and then you know you turn this whole entire piece to set your eye relief. And the way you do that, you get it, you back it all the way out. Look up in the sky, three seconds, and you turn it back clockwise until the reticle is clear. Once the reticle looks clear and it doesn't blur up after three seconds of, you know, you look, okay, is it clear or blurry? Once you look up and it's clear, that's where you set it to. Um, some people could set it all the way forward and it's perfectly fine to them. Um, I'm going to give it a shot, hopefully see what it looks like at 50 yards. So, yeah, um, I'll give you an update after I go to the range, whenever I find time to do that. Um, I don't got many rounds. I think I'm actually missing 4 out of 20 rounds out of this box. Um, so hopefully I can zero it in pretty quick. I mean, like I said, I'm doing it at 50 yards, so I'll have them bore sighted in, uh, which... 
and then go from there. Hopefully it won't be too far off. Uh, also, I still haven't gotten the hammer, you know, side piece. I could right now um, pull the lever back and, I mean, even without it, you know, I could go sideways and pull it down. So it, it might be a thing. I might, might not get, um, you know, because I, I wear fingerless, you know, the, the mitten and then you pull it back and it's the finger gloves. I use that when I go hunting just because, you know, keep your fingers a little warmer and you can always put one of those hand warmers right there in the, the mitten part. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll let you know how it goes uh, at the range and I'll show you the target uh, so you can see the grouping, how big the grouping is. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, see you guys later.